Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 3.3.12 VLAN Configuration. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco Networking Academy Version 7 Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Curriculum. So in this particular lab assignment, we have our network over to the right and we've got three switches connected to each other. So they are separating the different local area networks that we have. Remember what VLANs are for. A virtual lo local area network will help separate our traffic so that we don't have unnecessary traffic on lines aimlessly wandering around and taking up our bandwidth, possibly causing further networking issues. So. To do that, we have to configure our VLANs correctly. It can help, but if you figure it, configure it incorrectly, it can also hurt network performance or even communication at all. So we want to make sure that we configure it correctly. So if you look up here, I'm going to put our like VLANs in a box. Now remember, we don't have any separate networks here. Usually I draw a box around every network connected off of a router because it creates a separate local area network. That does not happen with switches. Okay. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we look at, so I'm going to put VLAN 10 computers in a little red box here. And again, this is just to look at what uh, computers were in what VLAN. I'll put VLAN 20 here in a blue box, which is PC2 and PC5. And then I'll use a green box for VLAN 30, which is PC3 and PC6 down there. So those computers should be able to talk to each other, but I don't want 10 and 20 to be able to talk to each other. Or if you're on VLAN 30 and 10, I don't want them to be able to talk to each other. So we have to configure them correctly. So um, first, they want you to display the current VLANs on all of the switches. So if we look at those, enable, and right here where we have just the pound sign, we can do our show commands and it's show VLAN brief. When we do show VLAN brief, we will see that we've got some VLANs connected or configured already, but it's just VLAN 1. That's default always there. And you notice all of the ports are assigned to VLAN 1. We can look at here. This is important to what ports are assigned because we really want to know what ports are each one of these computers connected off of. So it looks like FA011 is for PC1, FA018 is PC2, FA06 is PC3 off of switch 2. That's very important when we assign the VLAN. That's how the switch identifies which computer is where. These other ones are for testing uh, purposes and those are already on the switch as well. Um, if we look here on switch 3, we'll probably see the same thing. Enable show VLAN brief. We see the same thing. There's no other VLANs configured or anything. And then same thing for switch one. Enable show VLAN brief. And we've got the same VLANs configured. It's easier if you make this wider so you can see it in the correct format. All right. So it says if we try to verify connectivity, you will notice uh, it says try to ping um, that are in the same subnet. Ping to, to uh, host on other networks will fail. What benefits can VLAN provide to the network? We already talked about that. Uh, so let's go configure them. All right. So when we look at configuring the ports and assignments and everything, we have to first create the VLANs all together. And we can name them. The naming really does not matter. That's more for human eyes purposes, somebody going behind you on a network. But it really does not affect connectivity at all. What it looks at is the number of the VLAN. So if you could accidentally name VLAN 10 students and it's not going to affect configurations uh, or connectivity, but it will affect the grading of your lab. So make sure it is case sensitive. Um, so we want to do VLAN 10 name faculty or staff. And we want to do that on S1. So let's go to S1 over here. All right, so we're going to do config T. So we go to configuration mode. Let me widen this out a little bit so we can see it. And we're going to do VLAN 10. So you do VLAN and the number, and then name, and then whatever name you want it to be. No spaces are allowed in the name. 
Um, again, make sure it's case sensitive and spelled correctly for the grading purposes of the lab. And then you don't have to type exit in between creating them. Um, I'll show you here. If you just type in VLAN 20 and hit enter, it's automatically going to create VLAN 20. It's not going to name that other one VLAN 20. Okay, you have to put the name command in there. So it'll automatically just keep going. So you can do VLAN 20, name students with a capital S, uh, VLAN 30, hit enter. Uh, name guest and in parentheses default remember no spaces VLAN 99 name management the and sign native and then VLAN 150 uh, name voice all capital okay now if I exit out I'm gonna do a do show VLAN brief I have to do do so I don't have to exit all the way back out I now see I have 10 named faculty, 20 named student, 30 named guest default, 99 named management native, and 150 named voice. Oftentimes we also separate the uh, voice over IP traffic for like voice over IP phones or VoIP phones. Um, that way that traffic is treated a little bit differently, more high priority because again, it needs more bandwidth as it is a real time uh, voice conversation that you're having. You don't want those packets to get dropped because the portions of your conversation get dropped and they are not resent. But you notice everything is still assigned to VLAN 1. So none of these VLANs are really, they're active, but they're not operational because we haven't assigned any ports to it. So the computers are still operating as they were before. So um, we want to make sure we create these VLANs also on S2 and S3. So we need to repeat those commands. So we want to go to S2 and we're going to repeat those same exact commands. So it'll be good practice for you. So VLAN 10 name faculty slash staff vlan 20 name student so i'm gonna go a little bit faster through this one And we always want to double check with do show VLAN brief. And we've got 10, 20, 30, 99, 150. And finally on switch three. And then we'll do a do show VLAN brief to finally see that all of the VLANs are created on switch three as well. All right. Uh, and it tells us to verify. All right. Uh, now we, we created those, uh, verify the VLAN configuration. Now we want to start assigning them to ports. So now we're going to look at, uh, which computers are in which VLANs and what are their port numbers? The commands to do that are switch port mode and then we want to put it in access mode. Access mode means that that link, that port, can only carry traffic designated or flagged with that particular one VLAN. Can't do more than one VLAN. Switch port mode trunk, which we'll learn about in a later lab, can actually carry multiple VLAN traffic. But this one can only carry one. So for on switch two and switch three is where we actually want to configure that. So on switch two, we want to look at what VLANs are associated with each one. So PC1 is VLAN 10 plugged into port FA011. So we're going to go to interface FA011. That's the one that PC1 is plugged into. And we're going to do switch port mode access that tells the port 11 you only need to carry one VLAN and then we do switch port access and then you put whatever VLAN that happens to be and this one for PC1 is 10 okay then we do that for our other PC so then we look at PC2 and you see it renegotiating just based off of that letting you know it's being applied 
PC2, it should be for VLAN 20 and FA018. So we go to FA018 and we do switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20. Because again, port 18 only needs to carry VLAN 20 traffic, which PC2 should be in. All right. Then we'll do interface FA06 down here at the bottom is what PC3 in VLAN 30. So FA06, oops, sorry, interface FA06, switch port mode access. Again, telling it it only needs to carry one VLAN. Switch port access VLAN 30 to let it know to carry only VLAN 30 traffic. Now, if I do a show VLAN brief again, all right, you'll notice here now for VLAN 10, it says the FA011, that port is in there. FA018 for VLAN 20 and FA06 for VLAN 30. So they are correctly assigned now. Okay. Now, it says I need to do the same thing for active ports on S3. So let's go over to S3. And I want to do um, interface FA011. All right, that one is for VLAN 10 traffic. So I want to do switch port access VLAN, sorry. Switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 10, interface FA018 is connected to PC5 and VLAN 20. So switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 20. And then FA06 down there is connected to PC6 and VLAN 30. So interface FA06, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 30. So you notice here I didn't put in any of these like, hey, this goes to PC1. It doesn't, switches really don't even keep track of what your computer name is. It only keeps track of its MAC address. So the switch is looking at, hey, this PC with this MAC address, we know it by the computer name, but the switch knows it by its unique MAC address, which is almost like the social security number for your network interface card, is saying, hey, I know you by this, and that computer needs uh, to be, is connected to FA011 or 18 or 6 or whatever it is, and it should only get traffic and receive traffic based for, and tagged with this VLAN number. That's it. And then we can do a do show VLAN brief to make sure that took and they are assigned in the correct ports as well. Now, if you look in the topology up here, this one is technically plugged into an IP phone and then the computer is plugged into the IP phone. So the, the uh, voice over IP phone is kind of like getting the connection in and then distributing it also out to the PC. This is kind of even how my office at work is set up in many offices around the world because again, this saves how many wall outlets you need. You can share that same connection. Now, because of that, it says here, the S3 uh, Fast Ethernet 011 intercon interface connects the Cisco IP phone and PC4. Now, you notice we had a voice VLAN, right? So because of that, um, we want to configure this a little special. One port of the phone is labeled switch and connects to FA04. Another port uh, on the phone is labeled PC and connects to PC4. The IP phone has an internal port that connects to the IP phone functions. Now, you can, even though, again, access mode only allows you to configure one VLAN, but voice can be put on a separate one and still carried across that same interface. So it's treated a little bit differently. So, for instance, if you did switch port mode access, you wouldn't be able to do uh, access mode 10 and 20 on, let's say, FA011, or let's say up here, but you can carry for voice, and that is configured slightly different. You notice we don't use the switch port mode access uh, command, and we need to tag this for a voice VLAN, because we need to know that's special. So, under FA011 on switch 3, and again, it's only because we have that voice uh, connection there and we have a voice VLAN 
So here we want to go back to FA011. So interface FA011, and then we do MLS QOS for quality of service. All right, and then we want to do switch port voice VLAN 150. That again allows the voice VLAN to also travel across that port.